Howdy folks, we are going to talk about the American Revolution today, wherein the American colonies break free from Great Britain or England. So to start, as always, I'd like to tell you the goal for your screencast viewing today. When you're done watching the screencast, you should be able to say, I can explain all three aspects of the revolution's model for the American Revolution. How are you going to prove to me you did this? Uh, you will take notes on your revolution's note taker, which has all three aspects of the revolution's model, which is page six. It's blue. You'll also show me your notes, which can be in any form you desire. They can be Cornell notes. They can be bullet points. They can be co a concept map or any other form that you see fit to use. So little context. Uh, the Enlightenment thinkers are an important piece of context for the American Revolution. The ideas of Locke, Rousseau, Montesquieu, Voltaire, and Beccaria, which we've already discussed at length in class, all influenced the American Revolution. Also events in Britain the, the influenced the American Revolution. The ideas of the Magna Carta, the Glorious Revolution, and the English Bill of Rights all played key roles in the American people believing that they deserved more rights than they had. These ideas included the limiting the power of the monarchy, uh, people having rights, and also this idea of no taxation without representation. So settlers from Britain began arriving in the 1600s in North America, um, and the British did not really keep a very tight control over the colonies, and for this reason, when the colonists were taxed or things like that, settlers in America found ways around this. There was a huge smuggling industry in America that allowed a lot of things to come in and out of the colonies without the taxation that the Brits would Im begin to impose later. The French and Indian War, ironically, fought between the French and the Native Americans versus the British, caused taxes to go up quite a bit in the colonies. Also, the British made a more concerted attempt to cut down on the amount of smuggling that was going on into North America. The colonists felt like these taxes were unfair because they had no representation in the British Parliament. They felt like it was unfair to tax them. Um, the Stamp Act was one of the kind of more angering acts that the, the British passed. There were several other ones as well, um, and these ultimately these taxing acts led to the Boston Tea Party, which was a, a protest against the taxing of tea in 1773. And you guys have learned about this before. You'll learn about it more next year, so I'm going to kind of gloss over it for now. Um, this idea of no taxation without representation becomes very popular during this time period, and people are angry because they're being taxed, but they don't have any say over how those taxes are levied or how much they cost. Slowly, tensions increase as colonists start discussing independence from Britain. Um, in 1774, uh, representatives from all of the individual colonies met to discuss kind of what the next steps were. Uh, the first shots of the Revolutionary War, which we've already discussed, were fired on Lexington Green in 1775. And then finally in 1776, Thomas Jefferson, predominantly, was the writer of the Declaration of Independence, which told the British and the rest of the world that the colonies were declaring themselves free from British rule. The Revolutionary War was fought from 1775 until 1781. Uh, eventually, the, the American colonists won and the British left, and the Americans established a republic, which means just generally that there was not a monarch ruling anymore, that the power was shared among the people. Yes, Montesquieu would be happy. So the first part of the republic was run under something called the Articles of Confederation. And this was the first independent government established in America. And it was a pretty big deal because this was kind of how this new country was going to be governed. But there were some issues with the Articles of Confederation. It kept most of the power with the individual states, and the central government had almost no power. So things like taxing the, the citizens in the states to raise money, things like that, it, it left the, the central government very, very weak. Um, it only lasted for about six years. However, this did keep things calm and kept people bought into the ideas behind this revolution, or enough bought in that, that they allowed the Articles of Confederation to continue. And then in 1787, along came a document we all know today, the Constitution. And this replaced the Articles of Confederation in 1787, and this new government that it established gave the central government more power than it had previously. Um, however, people were concerned about the central government having too much power, about the legislative, the judicial, and the executive branches and the American government having too much power. So the Bill of Rights was also passed. And this was the first 10 amendments to the Constitution. 
um, and it was passed two years after the Constitution um, was agreed to be the supreme law of the land. And this was intended to protect individual rights. And we're not going to go over all of the, excuse me, we're not going to go over all of the amendments to, or all the first ten amendment, amendments of the Bill of Rights. Again, you'll take U.S. history next year. But just knowing that it was intended to protect individual rights, the rights of the people, um, to make sure that they weren't dominated by the federal government is the important idea you need to take from this. So, your goal from the screencast, you can hopefully explain all three aspects of the revolution's model for the American Revolution. That is, the conditions that angered people, the belief that they deserve better, and then finally a trigger event that caused the American people to rise up and fight against the British. Again, as for proof, um, check out your revolution's note taker. That should be filled out with all three of those boxes filled in. Also, your notes, bullet points, Cornell notes, or a concept map, or any other method that you see fit should be completed as well. Um, if you are struggling with this, talk to me. Talk to another person in the class. Or do both of those things and go back and rewatch this screencast. Thanks.